All right, so next, after we've done the gamma function, we're ready to tackle uh, what are called Bessel functions. Okay, so Bessel functions um, are solutions to uh, the differential equation. Um, so the, uh, Bessel functions, I'm not sure why, or, but they're denoted J sub A of X and uh, J uh, minus A of X. And these are defined as, this is actually the easiest way to define them. These are defined as uh, solutions to the differential equation uh, x squared y double prime plus x y prime plus quantity x squared minus a squared y equals zero, okay? Um, and it turns out that if a is an integer, then these values are going to be linearly dependent. Uh, but if A is not an integer, so if A is not an integer, uh, then uh, these functions, J sub A and J sub minus A, will be linearly independent. Okay, so will be linearly independent. All right. Uh, what we're going to do um, is we are going to uh, use the method of Frobenius to get a power series solution um, for these values. I want to just rewrite our differential equation. If I take this differential equation and multiply, every, uh, multiply everything by 1 over x squared, what we're going to get is uh, we're going to study uh, Bessel's equation, which is uh, y double prime plus 1 over x, y prime, plus uh, if I take x squared minus a squared and divide by x squared, y, what we end up with is, so we get y double prime plus 1 over x, y prime, plus 1 minus a over x squared, y, equals 0. Okay. Um, I want to point out that 0 uh, is not an ordinary point, it's a singular point, but it's a regular singular point. It's a regular singular point. And that's because if I look at P of X, you get one over X squared. And that means that X times P of X, uh, which is one, is analytic. It has a power series at zero. And likewise, Q, uh, was x squared minus a squared over x squared, or however you want to write it. And that means that if I look at x squared q of x, remember that you take x minus x naught times p, and x minus x naught squared times q. And in this case, uh, for q, we get this is x squared minus a squared. It's a polynomial, and therefore it's analytic. So this is analytic at x equals 0. Okay, that means that we're going to use the method of Frobenius, and we're going to get some solutions. Okay, so we're going to uh, apply the method of Frobenius to get solutions. So, um, so we want to study. I'm just going to write it the the usual way, x the original way. I mean, x squared y double prime plus x y prime plus quantity x squared minus a squared times y equals zero. And uh, we're going to assume that we have some sort of um, I don't want to say power series anymore, but we have some sort of series solution y. It's going to be c sub n uh, x to the n plus r. As n goes from 0 to infinity, right? This is the x to the r times uh, our power series, right? So just remember that this came from thinking of this as x to the r times a power series. Okay. Uh, and y prime is going to be the sum starting at 0 of uh, c sub n times n plus r, x to the n plus r minus 1, and y double prime is going to be the sum starting at 0 of c sub n, n plus r, n plus r minus 1, x to the n plus r minus 2. Remember that for the Frobenius method, we do not shift the index for any of these, right? So these start at n equals 0 because the original started at n equals 0. Uh, all right, so now let's plug everything back in 
So if we look at x squared y double prime, uh, our ordinary differential equation is going to become x squared times this last sum. So the sum from 0 to infinity, c sub n, n plus r, n plus r minus 1, x to the n plus r minus 2, okay, plus x times y prime. Okay, x times y prime is going to be the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, c sub n, n plus r, x to the n plus r minus 1, plus x squared minus a squared uh, times our original series. So that's going to be the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of uh, c sub n, x to the n plus r. And that should all be equal to 0. So that barely fits on the line. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to just kind of move everything around a bit and see uh, exactly how this is going to go. Um, we can do all the usual stuff. Um, so let's see. What I want to do first is take the x squared and the x terms and move them in the series. Okay, And then I'm going to split this as x squared times the series plus a times that series. So we're going to do a few things at once here, but what we have is the sum from 0 to infinity, c sub n, n plus r, n plus r minus 1, x to the n plus r. That's going to be plus the sum from 0 to infinity, c sub n, n plus r, x to the n plus r. And then uh, plus x squared times the sum from 0 to infinity, c sub n, x to the n plus r minus a squared, remember a is a constant, from n equals 0 to infinity, uh, c sub n, x to the n plus r equals 0. And we're already in pretty good shape. Okay, so we already have x to the n plus r, x to the n plus r, x to the n plus r, starting at n equals 0 for all of these. This third one, uh, we're thrown off by that x squared term, right? And of course... If that x squared term weren't there, this would be a Cauchy-Euler equation. Uh, we could just do all the usual stuff, and this power series method is way overkill. Uh, but we're, we're, it's not overkill. This is really the only thing that we can do because we do have the x squared term, right? If the x squared term wasn't there, this would be easier, but it is there, so we're just going to deal. So what we're going to do um, is... Uh, let's see. Uh, first, let's factor out x to the r from all of our terms. So we're going to have x to the r, sum from 0 to infinity, c sub n, n plus r, n plus r minus 1, uh, x to the n, plus the sum from 0 to infinity, c sub n, n plus r, x to the n, uh, minus a squared... Um, times the sum c sub n, x to the n, from 0 to infinity. And actually, let's move around a little iPad magic here. Let's move around some stuff. I want this to a squared to be inside the sum. And then finally, we're going to be left with uh, plus c sub n, x to the n plus 2, if we factor out the x to the r and move the x squared inside. And that's all going to be equal to 0. And, again, we can do a few things. Um, let's take uh, the first three terms and write them as a single sum. So this is x to the r. This is going to be the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of, let's see, we're going to have c sub n, n plus r, times n plus r minus 1, plus c sub n times n plus r, minus a squared c sub n, uh, x to the n, okay, and then plus our last sum, n equals 0 to infinity, c sub n, x to the n plus 2. And then when n is equal to 0, notice that this will give us a constant term, and when n is 0, our smallest term there, that'll give us a square term. So I'm going to peel off the n equals 0 and n equals 1 term from the first sum, and when n is equal to 0, what we're going to get is we're going to have c 0, times, uh, um, I'm actually just a little bit annoyed by the fact that I didn't factor this, so let me go ahead and factor this. This is just my own little 
uh, quirk here, but let's just factor out C sub n. And uh, let's see, we're going to have C sub n times, uh, this is going to be, I just want to simplify this a little bit. This is um, C sub n times, from the first two terms, we're going to have n plus r. Okay, so just to be clear about what I'm doing here, I have an n plus r and an n plus r, and we've already factored out the C sub n's. Okay, so I'm going to have an n plus r and n plus r, and I'm going to be left with n plus r minus 1. So it's going to be that part. Uh, plus 1, which is the part there, minus a squared. That's all times uh, x to the n plus that sum from n equals 0 to infinity. C sub n x to the n plus 2. All right. And uh, let's see, next... This is going to be x to the r, so from n equals 0 to infinity, uh, c sub n, and then this is going to be written much nicer. So this is going to be uh, n plus r squared, because this is n plus r times n plus r, uh, minus a squared. So the difference of squares there, that works out very nicely, x to the n plus the other, the other stuff. All right, now let's factor out the n equals 0 and n equals 1 term on the first sum. And so if n is equal to 0, what we're going to get is c0 times quantity r squared minus a squared plus, uh, let's see, if n is equal to 1, we're going to have c1 times the quantity, uh, let's see, r plus 1 squared minus a squared um, and then we're going to add to that the rest of the sum that we already have. So plus the sum, it's n goes from 2 to infinity, c sub n, n plus r uh, squared minus a squared, x to the n, plus this last sum, which we haven't touched in a few lines here, c sub n, x to the n plus 2. That's all equal to 0. And, um, well... Uh, from our initial equations, we have a few things that can happen here. Um, so from our uh, initial equations, let's look at this. This is going to be, um, by the way, I forgot when n is equal to 1. I forgot a term. Just looking back here. When n is equal to 1, I get c1 times the quantity uh, 1 plus r squared minus a squared times x to the 1. I forgot the x to the 1. So I'm just going to put that in there. So uh, what we're going to do is let's uh, do two things here. Um, let's shift our index. Okay, so we're going to shift our index in this sum starting at 2. Um, and then after that, we'll interpret everything. So we're going to have c0, r squared minus a squared, plus c1 times the quantity r plus 1 squared minus a squared, uh, x uh, plus, uh, it, let's see, if we shift uh, from uh, our sum starting at 2 to our sum starting at 0, this means that we're going to be looking at uh, c sub n plus 2 times n plus r plus 2 squared minus a squared uh, x to the n plus uh, c sub n x to the n um, plus 2 equals 0. I forgot the n plus 2 over here. I just fixed it, but just I didn't say it. So, All right, and now we're ready to look at our initial equations. So our initial equations are going to come from um, looking at c naught times r squared minus a squared being equal to 0. And uh, c1 times r plus 1 squared minus a squared x uh, being equal to 0. So really, I just want the constant to be 0. Uh, all right, so those are our initial equations. Okay, so for the indices, um, initial equations. Okay, so just... Uh, 
just so we can write that there. So those are our initial equations. Um, and from the first one, from this top equation, we get that we have three possible solutions. Um, we get that either C0 is 0, but we've already talked about ruling out that solution, specifically with the constant C0. If C0 is 0, then everything else is going to be 0 too. Okay, so we, uh, we're going to throw that out. That's not going to be a good solution for us. And so all we're left with is the r squared minus a squared is 0, so that r is plus or minus a. Okay, so that has to be uh, what's going on there. So uh, if r is equal to a, uh, then our second um, our second initial equation is going to be uh, a plus 1 squared minus a squared is equal to 0. Uh, and actually, the only way that can happen is that if c1 is 0. So we do actually get that c1 is 0 because this, this reduces to um, 1 plus 2a times c1 is 0. And a is arbitrary. a can be whatever we want. Okay. Um, you do actually, and I want to point this out, you do actually get something special and something nice if a is negative one half or negative, uh, um, so if a is negative one half or positive one half, you get nice values for the uh, for these Bessel functions. All right, um, but we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna take this route. So uh, we're gonna say that r equals a c naught is some unspecified value, say capital A. Uh, actually, I don't want to say A too much here, so let's call this uh, uh, capital B. Okay. And um, C1 is going to be 0. And if we do this, uh, what we need to do then is look at our recurrence that we're going to get from our other values here. So we're going to... Um, also have the recurrence that c sub n plus 2 times the quantity. Well, let's see. If r is a, then we're going to get, uh, this is going to be n plus a plus 2 quantity squared minus a squared uh, plus c sub n is going to be equal to 0. Okay, and so what that means is that uh, c sub n plus 2 is going to be negative c sub n over this quantity n plus a plus 2 squared minus a squared. Okay, and if we want, we could factor that out. Uh, if you really want, so this is a difference of two squares. So that means that this is going to be negative c sub n. Uh, we're going to have n plus a plus 2 plus a times n plus a plus 2 minus a. And so that really means that c sub n plus 2 is going to be minus c sub n over, let's see, n plus a plus 2 minus a is n plus 2. Uh, the other one is going to be n plus 2 plus 2a. All right, and so now let's just uh, go to work and see what happens here. So. We're going to go back. Remember that our sum started at n equals 0, so that's where our recurrence will start. So this, these are all going to be valid for n greater than or equal to 0. And if n is 0, you get that c2 is equal to negative c sub 0 over, let's see, if n is equal to 0, you're going to get 2 times 2 plus 2a. Okay, so it's going to be uh, negative 4b over, um, I'm sorry, negative b over 4 uh, times 1 plus uh, a. And c3 is going to be 0. Same with all the odds, because this is a second degree recurrence. Uh, c4, okay, what we're going to get for c4 is we're going to get... Um, let's see... For C4, we're going to get negative C2 over 4 times 4 plus A. 
Okay. Um, uh, 4 plus 2a, rather. So we got 4 over 4 plus 2a. And if you want, you can factor out. This is going to be uh, negative c2, so that's 4 over 1 plus a. Uh, this is going to be uh, 8 times... Uh, Let's see, if we factor 2 out, there's going to be 2 plus a. And so altogether, that's going to be negative b over 32 times 1 plus a times 2 plus a. Um, and in general, what we're going to get is if you look at the... Uh, if you look at um, our term here, c sub 2n you're going to get some formula for it. And um, really what we're going to do and the kind of canonical choice that we're going to make is we're going to choose to let our, our value b can be whatever we want. Um, but typically people choose b uh, to be 1 over 2 to the a gamma of 1 plus a. Because okay, that's kind of the relationship that you're getting here. And 1 over 2 to the a times gamma of 1 plus a. Um, and so what that means is that c sub 2n is going to look like, it's going to look like negative 1 to the n over 2 to the 2n plus a n factorial gamma of uh, 1 plus a plus n. And so that's going to be your coefficient, and therefore your Bessel function, j sub a of x, is going to be the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, c sub n, uh, x to the n plus r. And we're going to do the usual trick where uh, what we're going to do is we're going to write this in terms of the even and the odd uh, values of n. So it's going to be c sub 2n, x to the 2n plus r, plus... Uh, the sum from 0 to infinity, c sub 2n plus 1, and c sub 2n plus 1, x to the 2n plus 1, plus r. And of course, all the odd terms are 0, so that means that those are all gone. And uh, what we're left with then is j sub a is going to be this power series. So the sum from n equals 0 to infinity negative 1 to the n over n factorial gamma of 1 plus a plus n over 2, or I'm sorry, uh, 1 plus a plus n, times uh, x over 2, 2 to the n, uh, x over 2 to the 2n uh, plus a. Okay, and that's quite, um, that's quite something. <laughs> I don't know what, but that's something. Uh, and so this is um, the Bessel function with uh, the value a. And um, next, if you look at the Bessel function, I'm just going to totally cheat here. I want to point out that I actually skipped a few steps along the way that you can go ahead and fill in if you'd like. Coming up with this exact formula, uh, figuring out exactly how to get this in here. Um, how to, you know, get the quantity in that form. Um, but I'll let you do that on your own. And um, you that remember that that was just one of the solutions of the initial equation, right? So j sub a, and then j sub minus a, if we do this, we're going to get negative 1 to the n. Basically, it's going to be the same thing, except all of our a's are going to become minus a's. So you get 1 over n factorial, gamma of 1 minus a plus n, x over 2, and then 2n minus a, okay? And those are going to be your uh, Bessel functions, j sub a and j sub minus a. And uh, what I have um, is some of the values here. Um, these are, this is actually the picture that you look at when you log into our course, is this actual picture. And these are uh, different Bessel functions for different levels, right? For different values of a. Okay, so j sub 0, j sub 1, j sub 2. 
All right, and there we go. So those are Basel functions. Basel functions come up in lots and lots of places. Um, and the easiest way to define the Bessel function is actually as the solution to a differential equation. Okay, so there we go. So there's Bessel functions. I don't think I'm going to give you any homework questions that deal with Bessel functions. This was just uh, um, uh, just kind of uh, informational. Um, Bessel functions are really hard to work with, as you've uh, undoubtedly noticed. Um, but they're important enough that I at least wanted to... Uh, to mention to you what they are. So, uh, so there we go.